you telling the truth. It's like hanging out of a window not knowing how far the drop is. You used to work ten hours a day. Ten hours a day? I had a good day if I worked less than 16. I got the orders, I put them through. I chased the money in, I paid the bills out. I delivered me. I never see my kids because my ex-old lady's cutting the mustard with a farmer from, uh, from Line. Line. <laughs> line? <laughs> what? Where does the farmer come from, Lou? Ormskirk. I'm the prompt. Perhaps you'd better pay a little more attention, then. I can't help it. He's so good. <laughs> Not if he can't remember where the farmer comes from. <laughs> Are you sure this is the right play for the festival? What's wrong with it? Expletives. Bad language. Words that begin with B and P. <laughs> I told him. I did. I told you. Look at this one. I don't even know what that one means. <laughs> no. Well, if you don't know what it means, how is it going to offend anyone? Someone will hear it, write it down, go home and look it up. <laughs> and then... Uh... Will it hit the fan? <laughs> You're being very provincial, if I may say so. The play is perfectly adequate. After all, we had to take into account the limitations of the talent available. Considering that you are only standing in for Desmond Ned, perhaps we should seek an artistic opinion. <laughs> Where is the great man nowadays? Gateshead of Guatemala. I've forgotten what Desmond looks like. <laughs> Lucky old you. I've got photographs all over the place. <laughs> I'm beginning to think he's left you, Lou. Well, that's all right, then. I'll come and live with you, shall I? Then you'll have someone to laugh at all day long instead of just in the evening. Well, we'll call that a wrap, shall we? <laughs> what did I say? You've got about as much sensitivity as a wire brush dipped in vinegar. What if he has left her? That would be absolutely a fault. Yes, it would. So perhaps next time you'll be a little more careful and think before you unleash one of your smart remarks. Bite your tongue. Use a little tact and diplomacy, why don't you? We'd get stuck with Ned Race as director. He couldn't direct lemmings off a cliff. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, it was a joke. Well, it's always a joke, isn't it? When you've done something you shouldn't have done. It was a joke. Ha, ha, ha. Let's forget all about it. Women and their silly sensibilities. It was a joke. Men are a joke. Yes, yes, I, I know, I know. I'm sorry. What are you sorry for, as a matter of fact? Um, whatever it is I've done. <laughs> Whatever's just disappeared up your nose. I'm sorry. If you don't know what you've done, how can you be sorry for it? I have a well-tried and trusted blanket apology that suits all occasions. <laughs> come in, Louise. Yeah. What? What? He said, come in, Louise. Oh, <laughs> right. Can we help you, Charles? Yes, I, I'm looking for your next-door neighbour, the, the lovely Louise. Oh. <laughs> well, have you tried next door? <laughs> oh. No, I, uh, yeah, yeah, I'll try next door. I should. Yes. Oh, well, sorry, ne nearly forgot. Here we are. Oh. <laughs> Bye. Bye, Charles. What is it? It'll be the turn down from that local business job. Oh, I just love you when you're so up and brimming with confidence. Well, who's going to offer me a job? I've forgotten what work is. If I met someone in the street, I'd walk straight past it. Open the letter. No. Open the letter or I'll never sleep with you again. Did you hear what I said? Will you stay awake, though. <laughs> Read it. Right. Oh. What? Oh. Oh, what? I got the job. <laughs> <laughs> Finally and formally approved. Well, I know oh. I would, of course. <laughs> oh, dear. What is it? I won't be able to do it, won't I? You could eat concrete if you set your mind to it. <laughs> wow. Listen, I've got to go. I'll be late. Take the day off. We'll celebrate. I can't. I'd love to, but I can't. I'll see you later. We'll celebrate then. Right. 
Prime candidate, best man for the job. Nobody does it better. <laughs> oh, Lou, it's me. I got the job. Slip your corsets off, I'll take you out to lunch. <laughs> Who are you going out with? Charles? But what for? Well, I do beg your pardon. I'm sorry I asked. Ah, Belinda. Hello, Barrington. I wonder, are you free for lunch? Was there any particular reason? There's something I'd like to discuss with you. Well, can't we do it here? What about now? I have a meeting locally this morning. What I want to talk to you about is rather personal. Shall we say one o'clock? Hmm? All right, one o'clock. I'll see you in the Black Horse, then. Oh, Belinda, I'd rather you didn't say anything to your husband about it. Forward side together. Forward side together. Forward side together. Why are you so stupid? It's perfectly simple. I've been observing you, picking up hints. Do you want to learn how to dance or don't you? You only have to say the word. I just feel stupid, that's all. You feel even more stupid if you're the only member of the chorus line standing there tapping your foot while the rest waltz past. Come on, let's do it again. Oh, whistle. <laughs> oh, if you two are having an office romance, shouldn't at least one of you be lying down? We are not having an office romance. Are we? When did you change your mind? Aha, uh -huh, very funny. Uh, Ned? Your shirt's hanging out. What's all that about? Oh, they're doing a bit from Rosemary for the drama festival, and I can't dance. You're not in it either. I am now. Estelle's got a bone in her leg, and I'm the only other woman Ned can speak to without falling over. He speaks to me. He's got his fingers crossed when he speaks to you. <laughs> <laughs> You're very happy today. What's the matter? Nothing's the matter. David got the job. Oh, right, he phoned earlier. He said you've got to go home at lunchtime naked with a rose between your teeth. Uh, did he say why? He's going to show you a trick. You are a wonderful help to me. You know that, don't well, you? I do my best. I mean, what else can I do? If you don't like it, sack me. I might. I just might. You can't sack me. You won't have anyone to look down on. Open the bag. We're losing money. Uh, I can't come home and see you naked at lunchtime. I'm doing something else. <laughs> Thank you, Ned. Uh, you can go now. I'm just having an obscene phone call to get my heart started. You're mad. All of you. Stark, raving mad. Ned, I can't come home. I've told you. Look at someone else. I don't know. Try yellow pages. You're very funny. Pages. Hi. Clear off. <laughs> it's me. I know it's you. Clear off back to your sleazy, shyster lawyer friends. <gasps> You're grumpy. I thought you got the job. Who's the shampoo for? I've slipped my corsets off. Paul <laughs> <laughs> Rumpel stood you up, did he? And now you're trying to wheedle your way back into my good books, aren't you? Well, it won't work, Jezebel. <laughs> Grump face because you sounded lonely. If you're going to be horrible, I'll go and do the ironing. Sit down. <laughs> Silly faggot. <laughs> Are you going to open it? I got the job. And you'll be very good at it, too. Yes, yes, I suppose I will. Yes. What is it exactly you're going to be doing? Well, if you don't know what it is, how do you know I'll be any good at it? You're good at everything. <laughs> so what is it then? Well, you know these local government schemes? No. Well, you know, they choose a place that looks lousy, then they pump some money in it, put it on the television till it looks really good, and then the money goes away, and so does the television. Oh, right. Like those garden festivals where all the trees fell down the next day. Right. Well, this is the same. Only it's different. <laughs> this is funded by private business. Oh. See, it is um, seed corn to uh, attract new talent to the area and make the place prosperous again. And keep the government schemes out. Exactly. We will be giving advice to small businessmen who want help and advice in setting up their own businesses. Why are you looking like that? Like what? <laughs> <laughs> Don't be silly. Hmm. So, 
What are you actually going to be doing then? <laughs> He'll be interviewing applicants and deciding how worthy they are of assistance. Who's funding it? I suppose somebody is funding it. No, I'm just grateful that he's giving up a promising career as a housewife and domestic brunch. I wouldn't care if the Mafia was funding it. Ah, uh, won't be the Mafia. Oh, oh, you have some inside knowledge of Cosa Nostra and things Sicilian. Well, I know they've got their hands full trying to run the pizza place in the high street. <laughs> How's the drama festival going, Ned? Oh, you mean apart from the fact that everybody keeps dropping out? Including Judith Iscariot here. Look, I just got the wrong legs when I was born. I got the walking and standing kind. Somebody else got the dancing variety. Yeah. Having a bit of difficulty? Well, it's the same every year. Everybody drops out. I don't know why I do it. I really don't. Well, maybe you should make them pay a deposit. Yeah, £20 deposit. You wouldn't get many dropping out then. Of course, it would take a certain sort of cheek to even ask for it. Ned. <laughs> you don't make people pay a deposit. Well, if I didn't, how could I pay for the hall? I mean, nobody's going to buy tickets for the three-woman version of Les Miserables. The money's got to come from somewhere. Where are you going to get £20 from? Well, I was going to talk to you about that. You see, I'm, I wrote a cheque. And you took it? I thought you were a banker. I don't have time to be a banker. I spend all my time running around after you. I think you should look at that. It's from Mr Carr. What, Desmond Carr? Hmm. He's married to that mad woman who lives next door to you, isn't he? <laughs> have anything to do with the matter in hand? He's cancelled all his standing orders. You're joking. I never joke about money. <laughs> oh, dear. Done a runner, has he? It certainly looks like it. Uh, do you think this time I could do the house repossession? <laughs> Go and do something useful, Ned. Sharpen your guillotine. <laughs> it's no use getting cross with me. It's not my fault you live next door to a man who's got fed up with his stupid wife. Well, not going to be my fault. Maybe he came into the bank and saw you one day. <laughs> I'll wait outside for you one of these nights. Ooh! You'll never know what hit you. I may wait with him. I don't do threesomes. <laughs> <laughs> Behave yourself. What's Louise's number? 52897. Five. That's my number. <laughs> oh, right. Coffee time with David. Well, I can't ring them there. I think I'm checking up on them. You know she'd be having coffee with David. Well, if I lived next door to him and I was bored, unhappy, and my husband disliked me enough to stop paying the mortgage, that's where I'd be. <laughs> Tell you what, though, you wouldn't be having coffee. <laughs> I still don't get it. Look, supposing you had a good idea and you wanted to start up in business, but you had no money, you would come to me and I would put you in touch with the various agencies who could help out. Right. Who are they? Who are who? The agencies you're going to put me in touch with when I've got no money. I've got no money now. I never have any money. <laughs> who are they? I'm not entirely sure I should tell you, Lou. I'm not sure how confidential all this is. Oh. Wonder why they picked you. <laughs> well, in a letter they said I was the best man for the job. Prime candidate. Undoubted mixture of ability and potential. Pretty average sort of rave, really. Desmond always says, never believe anything you didn't write yourself, and then take it with a pinch of salt. Oh, did he? Oh, that reminds me. When's Desmond coming home? I'm not sure. Mm. What does that mean? Tomorrow? The next day? Sometime? Never. <laughs> oh, you should be so lucky. I don't know why you put up with him. It's not that bad, actually, old Des. But when is old Des coming back? I mean, he's our director. I want to know what it wants to do with the knocking down of the wall sequence. What's the matter? Nothing. You're slimming again, aren't you? I'm always slimming. You haven't had any breakfast, have you? I never have breakfast. Your blood sugar's low. That's why you're miserable. Come on. Where? I've got to get measured for a suit. How does that help low blood sugar? If you tell me I look gorgeous, I'll buy you lunch. <laughs> I'm not that hungry, thanks. Right. Ah, no, give in, give in. Barley, barley. Get in the car. OK. <laughs> doing? Well, it's your house. Go and ask him. I don't want to. You ask him. Please. Excuse me. What was he doing a valuation for? 
to see how much it's worth, Dumbo. Oh. Probably insurance. Yes. Didn't Desmond tell you? Not exactly, no. I don't know what to do. Not only has he cancelled the standing orders, he stopped his salary being paid in. How can you do that in a joint account? It's not a joint account. There's a housekeeping account, see here, and the main account. Main account's in his name. Louise can only draw on the shopping account. The well, man must be an absolute bottom. <laughs> the word has never yet been coined that would describe Desmond accurately. True. I'll have to go and see Louise. I'll go at lunchtime. You can't. Why can't I? Your boyfriend's just arrived. <laughs> Hello, Linda. Hello, Barrington. Um, I won't be long. Would you like to wait in the interview room? Don't worry about me. I'll just have a poke about. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Ricketts. Race, assistant manager. Hello. Hello, Mr. Race. How are you? How am I? Yes. Uh, um, fine. <laughs> What's been said? Nothing's been said, Mr. Race. Oh. Uh, Should something have been said? Um, uh, uh, no. Oh, that's all right then, isn't it? Yes. Oh, Thank you. Mr. Ray, look at that. How are you getting on with the open planning? Do you find it better? Well, the, the, the open planning? Uh, Mr. Race has been very helpful in getting everybody used to it. Good. Well done. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Ricketts. Thank you. I understand you're in charge of the local drama festival. It, it doesn't interfere in any way with my work at the bank. <laughs> I'm sure it doesn't. Good thing getting involved with the local community. I'm looking forward to it. You're not coming to see it, are you? Wouldn't miss it for the world. Come and show me these new VDUs. Jess, can't get hold of Louise. Draft a note, will you ask her to pop in? Do you think that's wise? Well, what else am I to do? I'm not going to let that little maggot of a husband strip every penny away from her. I mean, look at the price of that. The last suit I bought cost 50 quid. When was that? Before the war? A watches. <laughs> Who's that with Belinda? They look very friendly. It's her boss, Mr. Ratface Ricketts. You don't like him, do you? I wish he'd fall down a grid. Mm. Come on. Hey, they're going in my pub. Come and get measured for your suit. They're not going to commit adultery on the pool table. Adultery? Who said anything about adultery? Well, Belinda wouldn't, anyway. Well, you wouldn't tell me if she did, would you? Would you tell me if Desmond was? Desmond's a man. You can trust men. <laughs> I trust that swine Ricketts, though. Come on. I don't want to lose you. Could you keep your voice down? I live here. It's a simple statement of fact. No, it isn't. It's an extremely complicated piece of manoeuvring. So, in order not to lose me, what have you done? Well, what are you going to do? You're a very bright woman, aren't you? I do my best. It's very handy, isn't it? David getting offered this local business scheme job. Handy? For who? Who? For all concerned. One define all, two define concerned. Right, I'll pick it up on Thursday then. How did you get a gold card? I got it on the strength of my wife's amazing creditworthiness. Don't you mind? Why? Do you mind that your credit cards are down to Desmond? That's different. How? Well, woman leaning on a man. Mm. It's natural, isn't it? <laughs> Thanks a lot. Bye. Come on, I'll buy you lunch. Oh, Dan. I'll lend you some. No, it's not that. I can go into debt on my own now I've got a job. We can't go into the pub. Why? It's full of Belinda and our damn paramours. Tea shop? Right. I feel like a television set with two aerials. I'm getting very conflicting signals, and I don't like either of them. It's very simple. Don't patronize me. Why on earth not? I'm older than you, I write your annual report, and I'm a man. Who better to patronize you than me? I don't take the mickey either. Bank managers, Belinda, along with magistrates and members of parliament, ought to lead average sorts of private lives. One foot in ice, one in boiling water makes you feel comfortable on average. Would you accept ordinary? 
I've always known David didn't have a job as such. I always wish there was something that could be done about it. Oh, shoot. <laughs> and a pot of tea for two, please. I feel like an extra in a heritage museum. <laughs> so what are we talking about? We were just discussing how brilliant you are. Oh, come on, give me my moment of glory, Lou. I got this job on my own. No nepotism. It's fantastic. It is. What's nepotism? <laughs> Nobody pulled any strings. What do you mean, you pulled strings? And it's make money out of local business initiatives. I, I do actually know that. I am a bank manager. So, when we were offered the chance to fund this particular one... You jumped at it. I saw the memo. Thus putting us first in the market for all the, for all the accounts. Yes. Not to mention all the overdrafts, all the unsecured loans. And all the fringe benefits. <laughs> One of which was being able to choose the man to run the whole bank shoot. David doesn't have to know. Of course he has to know. Better all round if he doesn't, I would have thought. Yes, you're right. He has to think he did it on his own. He's going to be absolutely bloody impossible. I suppose that woman in the Employment Bureau was right, remember? No. She said I had a unique blend of talent and experience. Oh, that woman. The one who called you out of all that money. Her, I remember, yes. How's Desmond? Uh, while you're here, I've got a bit of a tricky banking problem. He never comes home. When he does, he's like a bear with a sore bum. Don't you mean a sore head? I mean a sore bum. <laughs> two sore bums. Well, you should do something about it. Like what? Well, make him jealous. Make him think you're in love with me. That should bring him round. This Desmond Carr, he's cutting his wife off without a penny. Point, and Ned found a cheque to an inquiry agent. So it looks as though he's going to divorce her and he's going to cut the maintenance to nothing by accusing her of adultery. Thank you. We could pretend we were having an affair. You could actually have an affair. That would make him jealous. <laughs> we'll play it my way. Maybe. Okay. In divorce cases, conduct can't affect division of matrimonial assets. I know that, you know that. Louise will be easily blackmailed. This is a small town. She can get a solicitor. Oh, indeed she can, once she knows what's going on. But you can't tell her. It's his account. No, I can't, can I? Well, at least she's not going to be committing adultery. I mean, David's the only one she's really friendly with. Probably have to come round more often and stay longer. If that's possible. <laughs> If the blessed Desmond Carr doesn't come back, I'm going to have a hole on Saturday night. I'll have to tell the cast. You can't tell the cast. Well, what shall I do then? Oh, no, any conjuring tricks. <laughs> I never see my kids because my wife's cutting the mustard with a farmer from... Where does the farmer come from? Ormskirt. I can never remember that. Why are you looking like that? I'm practicing looking interested. <laughs> I'm to help you hang on to your man. You should stop reading those magazines, Lou. You don't even like Desmond. I don't dislike him. <laughs> what do you want to ask Desmond, anyway? He's directing the play. There's lots of questions I want to ask him. When's he coming back? Ah, the problem is... Things I need to talk to my husband about, and they are all on the restricted list. I want to tell him to stay away from Louise. I want to warn him that his job's being funded by the bank. And I want to stop him learning his lines for a play which no longer has a director. Send him an anonymous letter. I, that is the silliest idea I ever heard. 
drop me at the post office, will you? I do. <laughs> Jessica, one day I will swing for you. Well, this has been a great celebration. What's the matter? What? You seem a bit far away. Chance would be a fine thing. Ah. With you, preferably. Oh, good. Bad day at work? No more than average. Hmm. Rat face Ricketts getting under your skin, is he? No. Look, all I want to do is help. Why won't you tell me what's bothering you? I've got three problems at the moment. Right. Three. Well, a trouble shared is a trouble halved. We'll take one and a half each. And I can't talk to you about any of them. Oh, fine. It's not like that. I'd like to talk, I just can't. Oh. And besides, you've got your friend Barrington to talk to, haven't you? What's that supposed to mean? Well, I saw you at lunchtime. It was a business meeting. Oh, really? Just forgot to mention it, didn't we? Well, I don't have to tell you everything. Oh, I don't know. Well, you wait till I go out to work. Wait till you hear all the things I don't tell you. <laughs> I'm going to come home with a secretive smile on my face every damn day. Oh, look, that'll be Louise. I'd rather you didn't let her in at the moment. That'll be the day we don't let Louise in. Louise is one of the problems. Hi. Door was open, so I came in. Who's a problem? <laughs> Actually, I've got a problem, and I wanted to ask your advice, Belinda. Why Belinda? Because she's a bank manager, and you're not. Bank managers don't know everything, you know. They know everything about money. <laughs> What's the matter? Well, Desmond has been seeing this totty from Gateshead. <laughs> and I want to make sure he doesn't pull any fast ones with the money my mother left me. Well, I can't believe you don't know. He's cancelled all his standing orders at the bank. I can't believe that Louise keeps all her money in Lloyd's. I have lent that woman money out of the goodness of my heart. And at a very attractive annual interest rate. <laughs> Still, that's one of your problems solved, isn't it? Two, actually. I couldn't tell you that Desmond had closed his account and done a runner. Ah. So, two out of three, eh? Yes. So what's number three? I've forgotten. Ooh, that's a relief, isn't it? I can get some sleep now. Mm-mm. What's number three? Gives a kiss. Hell, that usually works. What is number three, please? Oh, no, you can't say please. That's not fair. I'm, I'm having trouble at work. Barrington Ricketts, is it? Yes. Do you want me to come and sort him out? No, it's all right. Are you sure? It's not that big a problem. Yeah. Well, thank goodness I don't have to work for him. All right. It's a couple of weeks when I get settled in this job. You can wave goodbye to the bank, rickets and all. I can indeed. Mm. Hey. What? Why are your fingers crossed? Oh, uh, it's a banker's disease. <laughs> Tenor's arthritis. <laughs> so, what was that problem you were... <laughs> Is this what they call sexual harassment? Only if you do it on a desk. <laughs> and we'll be laughing all the way to the bank at the same time next week.